Hey everybody, Coach Lance from OnlineHockeyTraining.com and the question of the day comes from Josie. Hey Coach Lance, how do you tape a stick blade? Fantastic question Josie, but I already know how to tape a stick blade. Now hang on there, everybody had a point in time in their life when they didn't know how to tape a stick blade, so this video is for all of you and of course for Josie, so let's begin. Number one areas of the stick that can be taped. There are three areas on the stick that players can tape. The knob of the stick, the blade of the stick, and the shaft of the stick, also known as candy caning or barber pulling. Today I'll only be focusing on the stick blade. Number two, why do we tape the stick blade? Hockey players tape their stick blade for three primary reasons. First is to protect the stick blade. Second is to soften the blade, which enhances touch, feel, and your ability to control the puck and shoot it with more power and accuracy. The third reason players tape their stick blade is to express their individuality and creative side. Number three, determine if you're a stand-up taper or a sitter-downer taper. This is totally your own personal preference. Some players like to rock it standing up, or alternatively, many players, including myself, prefer to chill it out and take a seat when taping the stick blade. Number four, white tape or black tape. As an off-ice stick handling and shooting specialist, for inexperienced or players new to the sport, I always recommend white tape. The reason is that when you have the puck in your stick, you'll have coaches reminding you to get your eyes up so you're not always staring down at the puck. The color contrast makes it much easier to see the puck out of the corner of your eyes, or as an optometrist would say, peripherally. Number five, toe to heel or heel to toe. There are many players that choose to tape their stick from toe to heel, most notably Patrick Kane of the Chicago Blackhawks. The only drawback with taping your stick this way is that the bottom will wear out faster because the tape seams are going against the grain, scraping the ice, creating more friction, and accelerating the tape breaking down. But if you're like me, you're going to go heel to toe. Number six, how much of the stick blade do you tape? If you look at who influences how the youth hockey player tapes their stick blade, the group that has the greatest impact are NHL players here in North America, especially the ones that get a lot of points. If you look at all the options available from our trendsetters, like Ovechkin, Jamie Benn, Brad Marchand, or Logan Couture, how do you know which tape job is the right one for you? If you're just starting out and only have a few years under your belt, my recommendation is to tape as much of the stick blade as possible. Why? Because the stick blade and puck are slippery surfaces, especially when they get wet. When combined, it becomes very challenging to handle the puck with any proficiency or shoot it with much accuracy. Hockey tape provides control when stick handling and gives players grip when firing shots from distance and also from in tight. You have to remember that the players you see only taping a portion of their stick blade are the ones that possess world-class stick skills. So just because you see an NHL player taping their stick a certain way doesn't mean it's the right taping option for you. Let me show you how I recommend taping the stick blade. I start in a sitting position with my left leg over the shaft of the stick. You'll be starting at the heel of the blade right where it starts curving. We'll go from the center of the blade, cover that up, around the top, pull it tight, and that's your first round. Then we would just want to overlap a little bit and spin the stick as we go back and forth and start laying down each line of tape. But you're going to keep wrapping it, just overlapping a little bit on the top portion to keep it kind of parallel as you go around. You might have a little thicker overlap at some, but then just even it out as you progress towards the toe of the stick blade. Now once we get to the toe of the blade, there's two options. One is to bring it around, tighten it, and then you just rip it, lock it down. There's version one. Side note, how do you take off the tape? Start at the heel, and you're going to try to rip the first layer of tape, and then just work your way down towards the toe, ripping as you go. And then you'll have one kind of big piece done and ready to tape the next time. Now for option two, we're going to tape the full toe of the blade here. So once you get towards the end where it starts curving around, lock that down really tight and then we let it overlap a little bit like this. 
Let that overlap. And then you pinch. You pinch where it overlapped there. Lock down the next one here. Let it overhang. Pinch it together. Lock it down. Pinch it together. Lock it down. And we'll need one more here to cap off the top. And then I rip it. And I'm left with this. You're going to take your scissors. You're going to take your scissors. I'll grab the tape. And then I'm just going to cut along the edge of the toe of the stick blade all the way around to the top. I'll press down. Here's a closer look at the distance between the overlaps. So that's how I tape a stick blade and I recommend for players that are new to the sport or inexperienced with stick handling and shooting going all the way from the heel to the toe. Why all the way to the heel? Because our backhand shots typically are taken from the mid to the heel part of the blade. Why all the way to the toe? When we start using the toe of the blade for pull-in moves or the backhand curl and drag. Next, let's talk about stick wax. Do I recommend it? I do and I don't. I don't recommend putting it on the face of the blade on the forehand or the backhand because I've seen players just gop it on too much to where their stick becomes heavier. I do, however, recommend putting it on the bottom of the blade and the toe. It provides a little more protection and less friction on the ice when handling the puck. Lastly, let's talk about how often you should retape your stick. If you're waiting till your stick looks like this before you retape your stick, you're neglecting your stick blade and that's not good. I recommend retaping your stick blade every other ice session because if you take care of your stick blade, it's going to take care of you. Well, that's all I have for you today. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe. If you like the video, please like the video or give it a thumbs up. And if you think someone in your hockey circle would also like it, please do coach a solid and share it. I'd appreciate it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.